as a kid, be, before I went to Yale, uh, in the summers, I would work in steel mills. And I worked in steel mills because it was the quickest way to make the, the most amount of money. They were like sweatshops. But I'm not in love with steel. I mean, I've been identified with it, but I'm more interested in making structures and spaces and places. I just happen to use steel because I know something about it. I'm, I'm, not, some, I'm not a person who um, thinks of my bodily extension into steel. I'm interested in making spaces and places that you walked into, through, and around. And it, it occurred to me when I first started working in steel, it wasn't a material that I wanted to work into because I realized that from, you know, Gonzalez to Picasso to David Smith, the only way it had been used was to cut and fold and to hang out things in space that were false in terms of their gravity because they were anchored into the ground, which had nothing to do with their weight load. So I wanted to use steel the way that it was used in the Industrial Revolution. I wanted to use it for its counterbalance, for its uh, mass, for its weight, for its stasis, for its gravity, particularly for its gravity, because gravity is a force that's not applied in engineering because there's no, not, no code for gravity. The plates of steel are 40 feet long, 8 inches thick, 8 feet high. They're 51 ton each. So I wanted to lean things together and not use fixed joints. And all the pieces that I've made, even though if you put them outside you have to weld them, all the parts would freestand by themselves if they weren't welded. So if you take all the curved sections, like there's a big piece on 21st Street we just finished two days ago, there's 16 parts to them. It makes an enormous construction that you can walk into and through and around, which has different volumes in it. All of the plates in there are freestanding, but they just happen to butt together. And I don't make drawings of my pieces. What I do is make models. I make models, and the models go into um, uh, computer programs, and the computer programs go to the steel mill. Then the steel mill tells us in terms of tendency to overturn, whether within the tolerance of what's possible. Then we come back, and we make more models, and then they send us back, and then we finally get to the point where they make a steel model, then they send us a steel model back, then we either change that again or not. I think there's a generation now that's more interested in um, appropriating images from the past in terms of a quick readout than the physical manifestations of the material. It's not that it's better or worse, it's just different. I think the problem with people who are working that way is that the problem with virtual reality isn't that it's real, it's that it's virtual. It's real that it's virtual. You can't enter into its space. You can't enter into the space of a computer. You can enter into these spaces. Physically, you can't enter into a space. Same with cinema. You can't physically enter into the space. You're always dealing with an illusion. And I'm still interested in the manifestation of the physicality of form as it relates to your body in relation to material. And what effect that can have on your experience. Whether it's a compression, whether it's gravitational, whether it's path, no matter whether it's orientation, um, how you relate to your body moving in relation to form. That's what, that's, that's what I'm interested in in relation to my work. I think when you talk about art, you can talk about the how and the what. I'm more interested in the how and the what. But if you ask me about the why, you know, that's probably best left with the psychiatrist. It's, I think it's very important for young artists to understand that if you change the procedure, you'll probably change the result. And rather than mimicking someone else's procedure, it's most probably more important to invent your own procedure. So everyone has to figure out like how to make a mark, how to draw. Seurat happened to draw differently than Van Gogh, who drew differently than de Kooning, who drew, drew differently than Pollock. And you can see it in the mark making. So they all invented a kind of procedure. And if you ask me if I invented my own procedures in my own language, absolutely.